Hey YouTube, today we're going to be looking at a couple revolvers and the reason we're going to be looking at these revolvers is we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of having a 357 Magnum revolver versus a 38 Special revolver. And before we get started, I'm going to let you know that neither one of these revolvers have anything in them and we are clear to make this video. So the topic for today is calibers and the difference in the 357 magnum and the 38 special magnum and what we have here the examples we have is a smith and wesson model 66 and we have a smith and wesson model 60 and we're going to show you some of the differences some of the reasons why some people would choose one over the other. Now, folks, I don't have every single gun on the earth, and I figured these are two really good ones to compare. This is a really small frame, um, J frame, Smith & Wesson. This is more for like a carry, and this is chambered in 38 Special. And I have a smaller, like this is called a medium frame, um, K frame. Smith & Wesson Model 66, and this is chambered in 357 Magnum, and I'll show you the sides of them. This one says 357 Magnum, and the other one will say 38 Special on it. So, what are the differences in the calibers? Well, they're very similar, and if you look at them, if you don't have one next to the other one, it's going to be really hard for you to tell the difference, but... 38 special like this particular one was a j frame and this was introduced in around 1950 and it was came out as the model 36 it was a blue steel one and i think they made them in nickel also and in 1965 they came out with this version which is the stainless version this is the model 60 and actually this what makes this really cool is just the very first uh handgun to ever be produced completely out of stainless steel and i'm a stainless steel guy you'll see my um videos i have a ton of stainless steel firearms i love them they're, they're really easy to maintain they're very forgiving stuff like that but this is the first gun to ever be produced out of um stainless steel and this is a no dash one so it's kind of an early one but it is the very earliest one there's people out here that know all the pinned and recessed stuff and all that this one doesn't have the pin barrel or anything like that but it's it's pretty old it's an older gun so this is chambered in 38 special and this is aimed more towards the carry people the concealed carry people it only holds five rounds very small frame now if you get you can get larger frame guns like these k frames here and 38 special also to use more like a duty weapon or home defense or something like that and there are people that can carry larger stuff like this but i just don't happen to be one of those people now in a 38 special i'm going to give you some analogies and this is just my personal opinion 38 Special is a great round, but it seems to be a little bit dated in today's times. Now, they've made great um, advancements in ammo, just like they have in the 9mm that everybody loves so much. And they've come out with 38 Special Plus PE that gives you a little bit more velocity, a little bit more power, and everything like that. And I believe this gun here, you can shoot Plus P out of it, being the stainless steel um, frame that it has. I do not know that for a fact, but I'm pretty certain this one is uh, plus P rated. Now, almost all of the newer 38 Special guns that they have out today are plus P rated. Even if they're alloy frames, they make them strong enough where you can shoot plus P's in them. But a plus P ammunition has actually kept 38 Special in the game because the 38 Special is more like the old school 9mm. It really doesn't have the velocity, the knockdown power, or anything like that. It's just a, um, it's a self-defense round. It will get the job done, but, I mean, there has been numerous occasions where it did not get the job done, and they needed something a little bit more powerful to come along and and um, do the job. So what happened is Smith & Wesson produced what they call the 357 Magnum, and they did that, um, Back in the 1950s, I believe they came out. No, I'm, yeah, they came out with the 1920s. 1920s, they came out with the 357 Magnum, and it was the big old model 27. They call it the registered Magnum, and what it is is a longer version of 
the 38 special cartridge. So the cartridge itself is a little bit longer, so you cannot accidentally put a 357 Magnum um, cartridge into a gun like this. It will not fit. It's just a little bit too long. It would hang on the end, and um, it would not allow this to close. So they came out with that. A 357 Magnum is a very powerful round, and it, it's it's very very lethal. Has high velocity on it, and it will go through stuff. And it's a much more powerful round, better option. And if you were using this in like a combat situation or a self defense situation, now the cool thing about it is if you buy a 357 Magnum gun like this particular one here, and this is a K frame, and this one holds six rounds in it, you can shoot 38 special. Well, it's 38 special rounds in it so you put your 38 special rounds in it you don't have nearly the recoil you don't have nearly the ammo cost you can practice and it's just a very versatile gun and i think that's a great great option for people so in today's times i don't see why anybody would purchase a gun like this size like a k-frame 38 special or even this smaller j-frame i don't know why you would buy the one that would only shoot 38 specials because it gives you buying a 357 magnum gun gives you that option you may not even want to use that option but you always have that option it's more versatile so you can keep it loaded with regular 38 specials 38 special plus bs or you can put 357 magnums in it or you can put the really hot 357 magnums and have the ultimate weapon on it so I think the 38 special gun alone itself is a little bit outdated. They even have these little um, small carry guns that are um, calibered in 357 Magnum. So this one here is just probably a little bit dated, even though I like it a lot. I like these older Smith & Wesson pre-lock um, revolvers, the ones without the lock on them. And when they were all, before they had all the mem parts in them and everything, and the cool wood grips and all that, I like them a lot, but it is a little bit outdated to have something like this because technology's moved along and it's allowed you to have a 357 Magnum with something this small. And um, you, can, you have the option of carrying it with 38 specials. See, when you buy this, you're very limited on what you can shoot out of it. You're only, um, you're only able to shoot 38 specials on them. So, in my opinion, the th if you're out looking for a revolver and you want something in around that caliber, the 357 Magnum might be the better choice because of its versatility and able to shoot many types of ammos. It's like almost having two guns in one when you buy a 357 Magnum revolver. That's why it's one of the most popular sized revolvers around. But anyway, folks, I just wanted to tell you my thoughts on the 357 Magnum um, revolvers versus the 38 Special Only revolvers and why I think that the 357 Magnum is just a little bit better of an option when you are limited on what you own. If you if you want to own them all, that's great. <laughs> I like to try and own every single one of them. I, I, I don't, but I would try to. But I mean, if you're only going to buy one, or if you're only going to have one gun, and that caliber is what you're going to choose, the 357 might be your better option because you can shoot either one of them out of them, and you cannot do that with the 38 Special. But anyway, folks, let me know what you think. Like I said, um, I have separate videos on each one of these. This is Smith & Wesson. This is a 66-2 that came out around the 1970s. These uh, Model 60s just came out around 1965. And... Um, Great, both great guns. Smith & Wesson, you can never go wrong with them. Thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.